I, I, I don't want to seem predatorial, I don't want to see opportunists, but the fact of the matter is our business model has to work on an international basis with multiple city pairs all working together. Time and time again we're faced with all sorts of issues, whether it be the Sudanese problem today, of course the war in Ukraine, it could have been something else. There are many, many, many um, issues that affected what we do. The, the trick is to navigate the business through all of that, because through it all there is a very, very resilient demand for air travel. Contrary to what a lot of people are saying, a lot of people are flying today and plenty more want to fly. So whatever you do, you work around all those kind of issues and just get on with the job. Uh, we're fairly adept now at being able to shift our operational patterns, deal with uh, crises in various parts of the world and continue to, to keep our production levels up and growing. What's the difference in terms of dealing with those crises when we're talking geopolitics versus, frankly, politics back at home? And I'm talking specifically about the UK government. Look, it's, it's, we have to keep a, a finger on the pulse of what's going on in all the markets that we serve. You mentioned the United Kingdom, it could be the US, etc. And the societal issues that affect demand for travel, the societal issues that affect the general well-being of the population in the countries that we serve, we're plugged into that. We need to know how this is affecting the demand for our products and what we need to do to deal with changes. Now, it's clear that in, in the West there are societal changes going about and we, this is before AI really <laughs> takes a, a real toll of what's going on there. And the trick is to see what is going on and trying to make sure your products and your presence and your brand is attuned to what is going on and stays solid and pure and a shining beacon and doesn't get subsumed in all the issues that are vexing the populations of the West at the moment. How big is AI in terms of your future strategy for Emirates? We are just at the um, understanding phase. I mean, AI has been with us for a long time, but not the scale and the complexity and the intensity and the power that it will be in the next three to five, seven, ten years. And I think not just the airline business, but all corporations are going to have to step back and take time out to think about what this is going to do to the, uh, the, the processes in which drive their businesses, uh, the way it affects their brand and how their product range is going to have to change, if at all. Yeah. But one thing you can't do is ignore it. Harness it, use it, don't fear it, because a lot of people are concerned about what AI should and shouldn't be doing. Again, talking about societal issues. But if you're in business and you've got something as powerful as this coming along and you're very process-driven, mm -hmm. manpower intensive, You've got to take time to look at what this could do to improve what you do. Yeah. Do you think we'll see an era of pilotless planes, well, fully automated travel? I, I, you know, I, I would, I would say this, but the remains of my life, no, won't happen. Uh, you might see a first officer. You might see a one pilot aircraft, um, but even that will, will probably take time. Yeah. Um, bear in mind, you've got a, th a 380 with 500 and odd people on it. They like to think there are two pilots up there, but could the, pilot, could the aircraft be flown on a fully automated basis? Yes, it could. Technology is right up there now. Could it be improved with AI and all the bits and pieces? Yes, it could. There's no question about that. Um, so I, I don't, it's, it's, a, it's a perception. It's a stigma. There'll always be somebody on the flight deck, in my view. Mm -hmm. But then, I'm in 2023, what's in 2050 or after that? I have no idea. But.